Sometimes, inspiration comes from the most unlikely of places, as in the case of Anne Adams, a scientist turned painter. Zoologist Anne Adams loved art, but between working and raising a family, she had little time to enjoy it. Then suddenly, in her 50s, she started painting full time. She started painting uh, an incredible amount. She would do this regularly, day in and day out. There was an absolute explosion of output. There's so much art, I don't know how she ever had the time to do it in a 24-hour day, but she did it. What could account for this huge creative explosion? It turns out, at the same time, something was going terribly wrong in Anne's brain. She was having trouble finding words. It started off very, very low level and didn't really affect her in conversation that much, but it kept getting worse. Her speech became simpler. Uh, eventually, uh, by the time that uh, we saw Anne, she was only able to produce a few nouns. And can you tell me your address? Um. Her grammar was gone, her verbs were gone. Even uh, saying simple words like a bird was hard for Anne. Scans taken over the course of six years show what was happening in Anne's brain. Because of a rare brain disorder, brain tissue was deteriorating in her left hemisphere, in this area highlighted in blue. But in the right hemisphere, in the area highlighted in orange, just the opposite was happening. It appeared to be growing. Could these changes explain her newfound creativity? To find out, Nova Science Now host David Pogue visited two brain experts. Okay, so Ann Adams uh, gradually, over time, lost speech. What was going on in her brain? Well, she began to lose verbal abilities, nonverbal abilities, compensated. But how does compensation work? Why didn't she just lose speech? Well, because she still needed to communicate, and she chose to represent sounds and words in paintings. Wow. People who have strokes that affect one side of the brain learn to communicate in nonverbal ways. Oh. See. The brain's not a muscle, but when you exercise it by doing only nonverbal tasks, then the nonverbal side of the brain starts to develop better abilities. If you took a brain scan, you would see an enlargement of that area of the brain. In Anne's case, the changes in her brain inspired her to create an extraordinary painting based on Bolero, the musical composition written by Maurice Ravel. Anne tried to capture in this musical piece what Ravel was doing, but she did it visually. Anne translated Ravel's compulsive, repetitive composition into hundreds of repeating shapes. She called it Unraveling Bolero. Six years after finishing it, she was finally diagnosed with a progressive form of dementia that would eventually take her life. It explained everything that was happening to her. But the diagnosis revealed another astonishing fact. In a strange twist of fate, a half century earlier, Ravel was diagnosed with the same disorder, something Anne Adams didn't know when she painted her tribute to Bolero. What this means is that both Maurice Ravel and Anne Adams may have compensated for their loss of brain function with a burst of creativity. The brain compensates for the loss. This is exactly what happens. As you lose uh, one circuit, another circuit uh, is turned on more of the time. It compensates and it develops new skills that allow us to cope. 